Hi everybody, it's Tatiana and today I am coming with another book review and this is going to be a series review because I honestly didn't have enough to say about these novels to review them separately, um, but I will be reviewing the Light Blade trilogy by Kylie Griffin, which consists of Vengeance Born, Alliance Forged, and Allegiance Sworn. I read all three of these novels in the month of months of May and June. I ended up picking up this trilogy. I hadn't heard anything about it before and during a time period where I was just into buying shit, I saw it on Book Outlet and the synopsis for the first book sounded interesting and so I said okay well it's a trilogy, it's just three books and I think all three were under $3.50. So I said okay, go ahead and get it, see how you like it, hopefully it's good. The synopsis pretty much of the entire series is that it is, it follows the story, each book follows the story of two characters uh, with some supporting characters along the way. The human race is subjugated to the rule, slavery, and abuse of a race of demons called the Nairesh and you have the world is basically split between Nairesh territory what would be the middle common ground and human territory and you have the Nahord or Nareshi warriors on the side of the demons and the light blade warriors on the side of the humans and the Nairesh goal is to come and take human slaves to do their bidding and fuck and screw or use however they want to and the human goal is to avoid slavery, kill as many Nareshi as possible and if they can, when they can, liberate their human counterparts who have been kidnapped and sold into slavery. The three stories follow two different characters uh, in the first book and I can go ahead and tell you that because it is in the synopsis of each story. Um, the first book follows uh, Anika and Kaylin. Anika is the half-blood daughter of the savage Nairesh leader and Kaylin is a human light blade soldier who has been kidnapped and when Anika is told by someone in her confidence because she does not live the privileged life being the daughter of the Nairesh leader because she is half-blood, she is considered less than and she is mistreated, abused, and mocked by her father as well as his Nahord who would be his soldiers, those who are serving under him. He's like the king and the soldiers or his underlings, they all treat her like shit. And so when she hears um, about Kaylin being kidnapped and in jail, then she approaches him and offers him the opportunity to be free again under the circumstance or stipulation that he would protect her from the Nairesh as well as the humans once they get back into human territory. The second book follows the character on the demon side named Varian and a character on the human side named Kamora who happens to be Kaylin's sister and their journey and then the third book follows the character of Eric who is Kaylin's second in command and another Nairesh demon called Amara. And so all three stories are separate. You don't have to read the three of them together. However, I don't think that you would really like the series if you didn't. And I say that because I did not enjoy the first book and probably the first half of the second book. I gave both of those two stars. Uh, really the first book is a solid two star book. The second book about two and a half, close to three but not quite three stars. The third book I would give three stars but by then I was invested in it. I knew more of what was going on. Uh, I didn't like the way that the stories were written. I didn't like some of the voices in the stories. The first book starts off and I felt no connection to the characters whatsoever. After reading books 
after reading book one and then getting to book two and three, I felt more of a connection to the characters, but that's because they appear in the other stories. So you feel a connection to them because you know more about them than you know about the main characters in the first story when you start. I just, I didn't like the first book. There are some things, some phrases that are used and some the way that some things are said that just annoyed me. I was like, you're trying, you're trying too much. A lot of the swearing that takes place now, I, you know, I don't mind an occasional shit, or not occasional, I don't mind, you know, shit, fuck, damn, I, I don't mind that. But what would be in our vernacular as holy swears, I'm not a fan of. And a lot of the swearing that takes place in the book, they're not shit, damn, fuck. They are what would be holy swears, like they're they're basically cussing, but they're saying something like goddamn. But it's to the deity that she has created, that Kylie Griffin has created uh, for this series. So I wasn't a fan of that. Uh, I wasn't a fan of how the communication between their deity and what would be their temple elect took place, and how that was put forth in the book. Too too many italics. Everything that the deity said was in all caps. So all you, when you read something that's in all caps, it's like they're screaming at you. Not that it's somebody who is supposed to be or something that's supposed to be this great force that's having this private conversation with you. So instead of it saying, hi, Tatiana, how you doing? It's like, hi, Tat, how you doing? And I'm like, this is too fucking much. <laughs> And I, I really just, I, I wanted it to be more than what it was. And it's gotten very good reviews on Goodreads. And so that kind of threw me for a loop to start with the first novel and not have any connection to the characters. feel completely annoyed by a lot of the things that were said and done and some of the writing that took place. I was glad that the first story was over when it was over. As I said, when I read the second book and when I read the third book, I liked those more than the first book. I think that there was more thought that, that, was, that was put into the story, more thought that was put into the characters and the supporting characters in the novel, but it was still written in the same type of voice and that I, that I just didn't care for. It kind of reminded me if you are Resident Evil fans. The only benefit of the first Resident Evil movie is that it sets the stage for the rest of the series. The first Resident Evil movie sucked, but it sets the stage for the rest of the movies in the series. That is what Vengeance Born was for this series. Were it not for this, I don't think I would have enjoyed these as much because I would have just been thrown into these characters just like I was thrown into these characters. And I would not have had a connection with these characters just as I didn't have a connection with these characters. I, I wouldn't suggest reading this. Uh, I'm not going to keep these. I, I'm pretty sure that these are going to end up in Goodwill. Even when it got to the end of Allegiant Sworn, and this was, of the trilogy, this was the most my most favorite of the trilogy. I did give this one three stars, but even as it gets to the end of this, it's like the story is not complete, which can be understood. It's a story of slavery and racism and, you know, years and centuries of conflict between two races. So it's, you know, it's makes sense that the story isn't finished however for it to be a trilogy and written the way that it that it's written some things are oversimplified some things are it's just like she sat down with a thesaurus and was trying to pull out some different ways to say things that just did not it for me didn't roll over well but for to put all of that effort Seeing what seems to be effort into these three novels and get to the end of the third novel and the story is not finished. It, it, it was a little annoying and pointless um, in my opinion. So yeah, that's all that I have to say about this. So yeah, I hope you all have a good week, weekend whenever you see this video. Peace out.